So what we know now is that multiple myeloma can have different types of extramillary manifestations. Plasma cell leukemia uh, is one of those, and uh, patients that have circulating myeloma cells at diagnosis, more than 20% of the, of the white cell count, or more than two times 10 to the ninth per liter. These patients are called primary plasma cell leukemia patients. And we know that these patients um, uh, have a very aggressive underlying biology, a high frequency of poor cytogenetic abnormalities, um, a high uh, frequency of p53 mutations. So aggressive, these patients have an aggressive underlying biology and also an underlying aggress under, an aggressive clinical presentation and a poor prognosis. So primary plasma cell leukemia is still um, a disease, a variant of multiple myeloma with a very bad outcome. Um, and we need to yeah, uh, treat these patients also uh, in a very aggressive way. Appropriate induction with a PI, an IMID, a dexamethasone, and then in, in, in transplant eligible patients, you should consider double autologous stem cell transplantation or the tandem of autologous and allogeneic stem cell transplantation followed by uh, consolidation and or maintenance types of therapy. So a long uh, continuous type of therapy to prevent early disease recurrence. And what we also know from plasma cell leukemia, especially primary plasma cell leukemia, is that many patients die in the early uh, phase of their disease due to complications like infections, or, uh, renal failure, and so on. So to prevent this early mortality, it's also crucial that physicians start appropriate uh, prophylactic therapies, antibacterial therapies, antiviral therapies, but also are focused on uh, the possible occurrence of tumor lysis syndrome. So also these patients have a high tumor load, often already uh, compromised renal function, so they are prone to develop uh, uh, deposits of calcium phosphate crystals in the, in the kidneys, and you have to prevent that by giving the patients appropriate pre- and post-hydration uh, and also resburicase or allopurinol. So that's very important for plasma cell leukemia. And then patients can also have uh, uh, plasma cytomas as extramedullary manifestations. You have the uh, plasma cytomas that, are, uh, that have a relationship to the bone, and you have the true extramedullary plasma cytomas, which are uh, uh, developing after the hematogenous spread of tumor cells and they can develop virtually anywhere in the human body, in the kidney, in the spleen, in the liver, in the uh, central nervous system. And, you, and the doctor has to be aware of these plasma cytomas because they can compress important organ structures and cause trouble. So you have to uh, do something with them. And uh, it's also relevant for the doctor to know about the uh, existence of these extramedullary plasma cytomas because true extramedullary plasma cytomas also confer a poor outcome, they have a poor uh, prognosis, and patients presenting with extramedullary plasma cytoma also have a high risk of uh, getting extramedullary plasma cytomas again at the time of relapse. So you also have to take those things into account uh, when you see a patient with multiple myeloma. Is he or she having extramedullary manifestations, plasma cytomas or plasma cell leukemia, because it may influence your treatment uh, approach.